that wasn't even it. Johnny <laughs> decided to get down on one knee and act like he was proposing to <laughs> Carmen and was like, I love you, Carmen. Will you marry me? And it was the funniest oh my thing God. ever. <laughs> Cobra Kai. Kidding. Bonsai, I'm the Cobra Kai Kid, and today I am very excited to be joined by Dallas Dupree Young, who plays Kenny in Cobra Kai. Dallas, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today, and very excited to now get to talk spoilers with you, finally. I know, right? Let's do it. We had a I whole we had a whole discussion, um, which was such a fun interview, and we didn't even... Yeah. We didn't even know anything. All we talked about, um, about like season four with your character was that one phrase, bully new kid who turns to karate. That was all we had. <laughs> yeah. That was the interview. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. That was it. And, and we turned it into a two hour interview. That was awesome though. Yeah. And it was, it was so great. And, you know, having seen season four, um, I'm blown away and, and we're going to get into that. But um, before we do, we just want to announce that uh, throughout this interview, we're going to be raising money for St. Jude's, which is leading the way the world understands, treats and defeats childhood cancer and other life threatening diseases. So Dallas, do you want to talk about like why you chose St. Jude's to help today? Yeah, I chose St. Jude's to help today because I've uh, been an advocate for them for a little while now and just Watching those kids have so many dreams and hopes, it really makes me want to donate even more to try to help them out. And this is a really important cause to me. And all those kids deserve to be able to exceed any expectation or have fun and live their dream. And that's why I chose St. Jude's Hospital. Yeah, it's a great cause. So um, if you guys want to help donate, uh, there's a big blue donate button down below. You could click that and help support throughout the interview. And even when the interview is over, you can still support. So uh, we appreciate the help very much. And yes. uh, so season four has been out for a little over a month. And, yeah. you know, you can just tell. First off, I just want to tell you this, uh, just so you have an idea on your character and your character's impact and how many people are interested in you. Our interview that we did um, – back i think it was in june of uh 2021 yeah, it was you know a lot of people tuned into that and it was it was very well received but after season four came out that interview is my most viewed interview it has over a hundred ten thousand views what oh, and i'm telling you it was nowhere near that before season four <laughs> There's no way. I I swear. I swear. That's insane. More than any interview I've done. And it blew up after season four. And it's like people <laughs> like were so, you know, such a fan of your character. They wanted to see this interview. And yeah. it's funny because the interview was before the season. But they, that's right. They still wanted to watch it. So I just wanted yeah. to tell you that just to just so you know, like the impact that you had, because, you wow. know, I, I know me personally, when I watch a show, when I watch a movie and I'm interested in a character, what do you do? You search them up on YouTube, you search up interviews. Right. And that's what happened. So what, what do you think? That's, about that? Wow. That is, I'm so shocked. That's crazy. That's really unbelievable. But the funny thing is I actually had some friends uh, telling me that they were going back and watching my interviews with the Cobra Kai kid. A few people would take pictures of me. And I'd be like, wow, this was so long ago. That's It's it's crazy how uh, I really had that big of an impact on a lot of people's hearts. And that really means a lot to me because that's the message that I was supposed to send with portraying this character, Kenny. Definitely. And I think another, um, I mean, we know the show blew up. We know your character was well-received, but even your Instagram followers, like just Ooh. skyrocketed. It's like this show, it's the Cobra Kai effect. So like, like what has the reception been like from like the followers, the fans? What has it been like yeah. since the season dropped? Honestly, Drew, I have received such amazing feedback since the release of the show. It's it's really keeping me inspired and keeping me so happy about all this because the funny thing was all of the writers and the creators on set, they kept telling me, I'm telling you right now, your life is going to change forever. And I was like, 
Oh, it's like that? This show is this crazy? Wow, I'm excited. I didn't expect it to be like this because now I have like over 300,000 followers when I was at maybe 40,000 before the show came out. But in, but that's just, that shows how strong this fan base is. And I love each and every one of them because nobody has been negative to me. Everybody has just have had positive responses and that really keeps me happy and, and keeps me excited about the future. Yeah, so when I first... Uh, reached out to you about the interview um, back back in June. You know, I was excited to talk to you because uh, I knew you were going to be in the show, um, and I just wanted to get to know you as a person. You know, even if we weren't yeah. talking spoilers. But I have to say, bro, after watching season four, <laughs> I am blown away with your performance. And oh, I'm, thank I'm, you. I'm not just saying this. When you were introduced in episode two, right away, like your impact on not that episode, but like the whole show, like, like it was your story. You had like, you know, you were being introduced um, mm -hmm. to this whole universe that was already established and right. your arc and the, the acting, the, the karate, the transformation, it was, it felt so much to me. You know, my favorite uh, uh, Miguel arc was in season one, you know, him uh, mm. being introduced, going from bullied to yeah. you know gain, gaining the confidence and you had like your own arc with all of this other stuff going on like you were just as important as any other character so i just wanted to oh tell thank you, you so much i just want to tell you i'm blown away i did not <laughs> i did not expect that arc it was great oh my, that that really makes me happy to hear i'm so happy to hear that drew uh we had such amazing time filming and the the creators they gave me a rundown about how my character's trajectory was going to go. And I didn't expect it to be executed so well, written from all of the writers and the creators. They did such a great job just perfecting this character and trying to let me be who I am and put him into the character. So I really enjoyed playing him and I can't wait for upcoming seasons and future things with him. Definitely, definitely a setup for the future. I'm yeah. super excited. And um, a lot of fans, like including myself, you know, resonated with Kenny because, mm. you know, you know, everyone uh, from Cobra Kai had transformed into these like black belt martial artists, yeah. you know, and right. you know, here you are. It's like, I always thought like, what would happen? I actually made a video, like a little parody. I joined Cobra Kai and it was basically like, you know, Hawk beating the crap out of me. Like it was a little parody. Oh. Video. <laughs> So it's like, it's like when you joined, I was like, that would be me. You know, I'd be mm -hmm. terrified. And it's like, you know, to see you like, you know, you're still like the underdog, but Chris lets you in, you know, right. You had that underdog story. So did any like fans uh, contact you or message you like about like how like Kenny inspired them? Yes. Fans have uh, DM me on Instagram. If they told me how, I've affected their lives and how it's like how they've been bullied in the past, but they've learned to gain that confidence just to not necessarily fight back, but just to have a stronger mentality. Uh, every day they have to go to school and everything. And that really, that really makes me happy, honestly, because it lets me know that I had a positive impact on their lives. But the funny thing was that nobody really realizes this. I was actually nervous. I was genuinely, <laughs> genuinely nervous. That was so the whole time that we were doing the uh, my initiation into Cobra Kai, the whole fights with Kyler, all of that. That was my second day on set. First of all, I was a t I was very intimidated by uh, Martin Cove and and Thomas Ian Griffith, and I was genuinely nervous. So that's the reality in my character, and that's what makes it so like natural and authentic. Because I was genuine. I was actually nervous. That's awesome. Well, that it, it helped in the situation. It helped perfectly. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm sure it helped, you know, by the end of the season, you know, you as an actor, you uh, build more confidence and, you know, your character right. as the season goes on builds more confidence. Mm -hmm. So right there. There you go. Right. Yep. The, the trajectory was perfect. That It was on time at, with everything. I started to get more comfortable on set and more relaxed with all of my cast members. So it really worked out perfectly. Yeah. What have your uh, friends and family, what have they said about Kenny and your role? Oh, um, well, the first thing is my, my great aunt, actually, she called me and she said, I don't like the fact that you cursed. And I was, and I, I was, 
I was laughing so hard. I was like, I'll never do it again. I was like, I'll never do it again. But she said, but, she, but it was good because she said, but besides that, I really love your performance. But uh, no, everybody in my family have had such great responses and they've been really encouraging to me. They just contacted me, told me how great the performance was, how great the show was as a whole. And it, it's and then my friends, it's cool because some of them didn't even know I was in Cobra Kai because some of them I just we never had that conversation about Cobra Kai. So they had no idea. But then the other ones, they would post on Instagram. I got a, I got tagged in so many posts on the first day, just uh, telling me that they were watching the show, clips of me doing the dance moves in episode two. So uh, no, the responses have really been great from my family, my friends, and the fans of the show. That's awesome. And speaking of those dance moves, I'm curious, who who choreographed that? Was that you? Was that like, who was brought on to the, make that? So uh, it was it was a mix of me and the producers of the show. So they were giving me a few ideas of what I can do, um, especially like when the Russo says the S word in my pants dance. You remember when he says that? Yeah. They were like, just do something where, where you're like shaking your butt or moving <laughs> over here, just so he so it gives them a motive to say that. But I didn't even practice it at home the day prior. I said I'm going to be as goofy. And as weird as possible, because this is going to be hilarious once it comes on on screen. And I eventually did it with everything that uh, all the other people have told me to do with the creators and the writers. And uh, it, it, it came out great on camera. So the moves specifically were from you? The moves specifically were from me, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because I'm curious, like... In certain scenes, like I'm sure, like when Robbie and Tori had their dance, I'm sure someone did that. <laughs> I, I, th I think I think they had a dance choreographer on set. I'm, I think so, but but I know Tanner has a dancing background. He's a he's a tremendous dancer. I don't know about Peyton, but Peyton did very well on screen. So they were they were great together. That chemistry was awesome. Yeah, th they definitely killed it. Um, yeah. Do you dance in real life? I dance for fun. I, I used to dance at a, I used to go to a dancing class uh, maybe three years ago, but then I just stopped just to really focus on acting. And once that happened, I was like, I'm just going to dance for fun and just be goofy with it. Why not? So you, you do the Kenny moves in real life. You put in the head. I do the Kenny. <laughs> yep. I do the Kenny moves in real life. Okay. Hey, I'll be honest. Me too. You know. <laughs> It happens sometimes. It's like that. <laughs> you got to do it. You got it. Yep. So um, I'm curious, like, have you been out in public at all since season four? Any, like, public recognition? Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 been surprisingly a lot of it, really. Because really? I've, I've been in public uh, a good amount of times, especially at the gym. Whenever I'm at the gym and I'm working with my trainer, people always, like, they come by me and they'll be like, oh, Cobra Kai, Kitty. But the craziest spot was I was at SoFi Stadium for the Cardinals versus the Rams game. And I didn't get recognized the whole game. I was leaving. Right when I was leaving, people started to come over to me and be like, hey, are you Kitty from Cobra Kai? I'm on the escalator and somebody recognizes my back. Somehow. Somehow. And they say, are you the kid from Cobra Kai? I looked back and I was like, oh, me? He, he was like, he was like, oh, no way. I was like, how did you recognize me? But no, no, the recognition, has, it's been really cool. I, I've really been enjoying it. And I've met some really great people. And it's, it's really amazing to see that I'm inspiring them to do better in the world. So I'm like, I'm so happy to hear that you love the show. That's so awesome. Are you going to, um, are you, do you have any plans to go to like any of the conventions or comic cons in the future? I want to go to the conventions and Comic-Con. That's something that I definitely want to do. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it at the next Comic-Con, but probably the next one after that, I'm going to try to make it. That would be epic. Let me know if yeah. you're in the Jersey area. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. Oh, wait. So so you you live in New Jersey? Yeah. Okay. I'll probably be there because that's where my dad's from. So I visit, Really? Yeah. I visit his family up there all the time. So we definitely have to link up. Dude. That would be awesome. Let me know. For Let sure. Me know. For sure. So I want to show you a clip from Karate Kid. Okay. Oh, okay. And I want okay. just a little quick clip. And I want you to tell me if you knew about this or not. Okay. I think I have an idea of what you're going to show me. I have a really? feeling. I know. I have a feeling. Let's see. Let's see. All right. All right I'm here excited. It is. Here it is. I got poison ivy. 
you met Kevin and Kenny, who became your best friends in the whole world? Oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Did you know oh, that? I had no idea. And the funny thing is, I watched that movie after I booked Cobra Kai too. I watched oh, yeah. the movie and I did not hear it. That's hilarious. Wow. I never heard it. That's funny. Wait, what did you, what did you think that I was going to show you? The fence scene? I thought, I thought you were going to show me the fence, the fence, scene. Scene, the fence scene. I thought you were going to show the me fence the fence scene. scene. A lot of people had tagged me in their little edits and said, oh, look at this. The comparison <laughs> right there. Yeah. Well, I, I, I wasn't sure if you knew about that or not. So you, you didn't. Uh, whenever I did, I had no idea. I had no idea that that was a comparison whenever I filmed it. And then after I watched the movies, I was like, oh, okay. That it all makes sense now. And then once I saw the edits, I was like, oh, okay. This is, this is really a comparison here. But no, it, it was really cool how they were, they were side by side. And I was like, wow. Yeah. And did you, did you, you, you didn't know about, um, Daniel's old friend being named Kenny. I had no idea his old friend was named Kenny. Absolutely no idea. That's wild. I think that's where they got it from. That's where they got the name, Kenny. Just a little a little Easter egg. I don't know. Um, I'm sure I'm like, it's like you could say it might have been a coincidence, but with this show, there's never any coincidences. Right. Exactly. Right, right. They know exactly what they're doing. They're always playing things one step ahead. Unless if if you're that friend that he's referring to. That means you would be in your like your fifties, right? Are you? Are you? Is he referring to you? Maybe so. Hey, <laughs> the Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little cool Easter egg. I wanted to <laughs> see if you knew. Um, that was really cool. Yeah. So, before we talk about season four. I know you just finished filming season five, which congratulations. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, you talked about uh, starting season four, you were nervous. And then, you know, as you went on, you got more comfortable. But going into season five, having a season already under your belt, um, how did you feel like filming that compared to season four? Filming season five compared to season four, I was a lot more confident whenever I stepped onto set every single day. I already had relationships established with all of the cast members, so I really felt a little more comfortable with everybody, even though they did welcome me with open arms. That was just me, and mentally, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm the new kid, I'm the youngest on set, I feel so weird. But no, season five, it, and I got to learn more about all of the cast members in season five too. I had to, I had deep and meaningful conversations with each and every one of them. And I can't wait for everybody to see the show. It's, it's just as great and even better than season four. Wow. There we go. William yes, Zapp sir. said season five was his uh, favorite season. Season five is my favorite season too. Awesome. And he yep, said that before yep. season four, it's like every season is just going to get better and better. That's right. Yep. <laughs> Kenny's like the freshman who makes the varsity team in his freshman year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, for real. Definitely, definitely. That's like a, a good analogy for him. It is. So in our last interview, you said you were going to uh, start taking karate classes on your own time. And I'm wondering, <laughs> did you get to do that? Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> this is kind of unfortunate too, because so <laughs> after our talk, I actually got injured. What? Yeah, I had a bad injury that took me out right until the start of season five. I couldn't do a single karate move. It was that bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had oh a, my God. yeah, yeah, it was rough. And it, that was like, I'm going to say maybe two weeks after our interview. And I was so excited to get back out and work in again. But that honestly just uh limited all of the thing all of the abilities that i had but the good thing is once i got back on set for season five i took it easy at first i did everything slow until my calf fully healed and then i was able to go back to it but now now working up for who knows future seasons anything that could happen in the future i'm gonna get back to uh to classes how did you injure yourself i was at strengthening and conditioning class and i started to feel a weird thing in my, a weird pain, kind of a sharp pain in my calf. 
And the problem was I didn't listen to it and decide to sit down. I, just, I decided to keep going and it eventually popped. So oh. I had I had a calf strain and then I was and for some reason it kept getting worse, even though the doctor only said it was going to take two weeks. It eventually took about four months. Jeez. Yeah. So I was out the whole summer, but it's OK. I was season five. I was good. I was I was back. I was back in action. That's all that matters. And now I'm fully healthy. Yeah, and in, in a way, like you, you just gotta, I guess, be thankful for the timing. Like, yes, what, yeah. what would have happened? Like, say, like that. That's actually scary. I've never really thought about that. Like, what, what if that happened? Like during season five, like, it. Do they have to change? It, the it would story? be. A, yeah, they they would have to because I I wouldn't be able to perform. No, well, not necessarily. Actually, no. I actually had a conversation with somebody about this. If anybody ever got injured, they have to push back any of their scenes with them fighting for until they get fully healthy. That's why I was so nervous whenever I got injured. I was like, well, I have enough time to heal. And I eventually did. Yeah. And you don't want to be that person that like, like changes the whole filming schedule. Right. Right. And even though I felt a little bit of pain every now and again. I was like, I got to keep going because I'm not, I'm not going to be the one to stop production. I was like, that's not <laughs> happening. The people want to see the show. <laughs> and are you good now? You're a hundred percent now. 100%. Yes. Cap is fully healed. Body is great. So yeah, feeling good. Good, good. So you've been posting photos of yourself training. Um, and right now we're in the off season. So mm -hmm. can you talk about like the off season training? What have you been doing to like stay in shape and like, you know, prepare yourself for the next seasons? Like what does your schedule look like? Yeah. So I work with a trainer. His name is Corey and he's been incredible for me. He, we worked probably two to three times a week. So pretty much what I said. So the funny thing was uh, Jacob was talking to the creators and they were like, we need to get Dallas with his shirt off one time just because of season four with them having their shirts off. And I said, wait, I'm going to give me a six pack. Just wait. So I am now determined to work out on a consistent uh, on a consistent basis and get that six pack. But now I'm pretty much just working just to get fully healthy, uh, start eating better. And honestly, just we always call it, we're trying to get the Tanner Buchanan body. So <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get the nice muscles, the ripped chest, six pack, all of it. But no, I'm just, I'm just working to get back in shape. Nice. Kenny just pulls into episode one, just takes off his shirt right away. <laughs> I, know. I know, right? <laughs> like the transformation. The transformation. Yeah. There we go. So what, what's the um, schedule like when you're filming and training? Because that must be very overwhelming. Yes, it is overwhelming at times just because we have to fit school in with training. So whenever we train, we have to school. It's we are we're obligated. So we have to school every single time. So we have to figure out the time where we're not filming. We're not uh, we don't have to get three hours of school in and we have to do training. So it does get overwhelming at times. But usually on our off days, that's when we spend our time training and getting prepared for the choreography. And if we don't have time to go in and work on the choreography, they'll send a video and we just have to work on it at home. And honestly, I usually take maybe an hour or two just to get that all in my mind and figure out the motions and the technique that Kenny needs to have and start figuring out character development. But uh, yeah, that's, that's usually our uh, training schedule. <laughs> yeah. I always gave you and like all the Cobra Kai like cast like major props because not only are you acting, but like you, you need to learn like karate. You need to learn like this choreography, like, like the training, like that must be so tough alone, but you know, you're at, you're still acting in a TV show. So right, I, it's like so much of that I'm sure is like, you do so much behind the scenes that people don't even see. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, we really do a lot behind the scenes, but the best part of, uh, for me was I was extremely nervous especially whenever I got onto uh, the trailer that we were doing our, you know, martial arts and stunt choreography. But all of the cast members were so elite and so good at what they were doing that I started to actually feel more comfortable because I was like, I want to get there at some point. I know it won't be this season because I'm, I'm a beginner. I don't really know what I'm doing. But if I just have the correct guidance and our stunt coordinators are the best stunt coordinators out there in the game, in the industry, in my opinion. So I'm, I'm starting to really learn and starting to really grow in my martial arts. Yeah. So 
Okay, so you were training like the whole season four, but give me an idea. Like at what episode, you know, we saw Kenny, you know, as the show went on, you know, he was getting better at karate. But at like what episode, like just to give us a time frame, did you, Dallas, like get really good at karate? Like around when? Episode seven was when I started to get really good at karate. Before, I was actually going through the basics, like front kicks, roundhouse kicks, uh, punch combinations. But then we started to really focus on choreography, like the whole stunt sequence uh, against Tanner Buchanan and Robbie in the, uh, the dojo, whenever we were talking about exploiting weaknesses. I started to really go through the motions, and then I had that whole fight sequence against my bullies. That's when I started to really... No, like, oh, no, we're, we're epping it up a little bit. We're or upping, yeah, just upping the ante a little bit and starting to level up. And it was really important for me to grow and become a stronger martial artist. And definitely by the tournament, because it wasn't really until the tournament uh, in the, um, what, what what are the matches called? I always forget. The quarterfinals or the, uh, the, the board breaking, uh, what, what, what is it? Skills competition. No wait, no when you're when you're like when you're fighting to get into the quarterfinals, like like, like oh oh the preliminary oh. rounds, right? Oh, the preliminary rounds, yes. yes, yes, yes. So like there, you know, that was when you really saw like that was your first real fight with like yeah. you know a back and forth punching, yeah. kicking, blocking, right? Right, yeah. That that was my first real fight. I was so excited to be on that stage. It was really cool. Yeah, what what was it like, you know, training for that? Because you you were in a couple other fights before, but you know this this one was like like a real back and forth. And were you uh, fighting like uh, we know it was like an like someone we uh, cast member we didn't know was that like a professional uh, stunt yes. person? Yes. Okay. Any any cast member that uh, people don't know their names on the show or they haven't been released yet it's going to be a professional stunt man because we we can't risk any they they can't risk any actors getting injured by any unprofessional people or people in the in the business so they only get professional stunt uh stunt coordinators or or stunt performers yeah that fight was so insane did did you um because the montage was very quick it was all very quick cut i'm curious mm -hmm. did you film a lot more with that fight than we, than what we saw in the final cut um and which one was it It was the one right before nate and i nate and I yeah died, right yeah uh no that was literally the fight really that was yeah no that was it it was it was quick we didn't learn it prior it was pretty much on the spot they said here are the moves you can change it up as kenny would at that stage in his you know martial arts career and then have fun pretty much and i was like okay let's do it no that was pretty much the fight that that was like it for everybody and i like how they gave kenny his own fighting style like the speed i like that like yeah. that's his thing like being quick you know he's smaller than the other guys but you know yeah he, he uses that to his advantage so um in the cobra i don't know if you know about the cobra kai video game that came out recently yes yeah so what i love about that game is like it has like a bunch of the characters from the show and everyone, like whoever you play as, it's literally their fighting style, their positions, like the way they yeah. punch and kick. Would you like, what, what do you think about like if they did another Cobra Kai video game and having a Kenny character? Oh, <laughs> oh, I know they're going to use speed uh, to his advantage. I know that's going to be the number one thing for him. I don't know what they're going to do with the fighting stance. I'm excited to see that, but no, it, it, I would love that would be an incredible honor for me to be in a video game. That's always been a dream of mine. That's like the the top thing. Yeah, yeah. That's how you that know you made it. it. Right <laughs> well, not made it just yet. Still got a lot of room to grow, <laughs> but I'm getting there. I'm trying yeah. to get there. Definitely, definitely. Um, they they have the Cobra Kai mobile game, which I know they've been updating. So mm. I think it's only a matter of time before they put you in there. I hope so. I hope so. I don't. <laughs> I still have yet to play the game. I need to. I need to buy it. I need, I have to buy it now. Well, there's the there's the video game on Xbox, and mm -hmm. then there's the mobile game, which they like update frequently. Yeah. So the mobile game is kind of like. Have you ever uh, played Club Penguin before? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. 
I have. Know, so that's what it's like. You know, card jitsu. <laughs> oh, card jitsu! I've heard of that though. From the dojo, from the dojo where you pick the card and it has a high score, and then. Like, no, never, never heard of it. Never heard of it, but. It's, but that's it's it's kind of like that. It's it's like a card thing where like you just like press a card and if it has a high score, you beat the other person. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. That's cool then. That's that's still cool. Yeah. But the Xbox game is more fun though. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So um, a lot of theories with your character before the mm -hmm. season came out. What was your reaction? Because I'll tell you my reaction. I went nuts. I, I fell out of this chair when I found out that Sean Payne was your freaking brother. Yes, sir. When yeah. did you find out about that? What was your reaction? Uh, Whenever I found out about other people's reactions or whenever I found out that Sean was my brother? Uh, When you found out. When I found out, I was, I was shocked. I didn't even expect this. I was reading the script and then... You can see it was leading up to something at the end because it was a quick series of montages towards the end of seeing me, uh, how sad I am and how this whole bullying scandal has affected me with the whole milk carton and them scaring me with that. I was like, okay, what's about to happen? What's about to happen? Next thing you know, Sean Payne is my brother. I was elated. I, I couldn't wait to work with him. And he was such a great person to work with. So encouraging, such a great actor. But uh, no, I, I was really excited, and I'm so happy that I got to see every, all of the reactions from other cast members and other uh, fans of the show. It was a great tie-in, and then when you go back and watch the episode, like you see like the setups, like you know, uh, your dad saying, you know, after everything that happened to your brother, it's like you think he died or something. Right, right. Everybody, I saw all the reactions. They were like, "Oh my goodness, did he die?" I was like, "Oh, just wait." Just wait. You're going to be surprised. And then it's like crazy. In the next episode, it's like you have this mission now. Find Robbie. <laughs> Find Robbie. That's right. Yep. Yep. It's like the video game mission. So like if you're in the video game, it's like you show like a whole like side quest. Of you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. No, for real. Definitely. <laughs> That'd be sick. Uh, that what was it like working with uh, OK? Okay, he's such a tremendous actor. Just working with him and being on set with him. I was already a fan of the show, so getting having the pleasure to meet him and the honor to meet him was really cool. And the fact that he plays my brother is even even more exciting. But just being able to work with him was was really exciting. And we got to hang out after the show. We went to go play, pick a ball with a few other guys from the show. So, no, wow. we had a great time having that chemistry on set and getting to know each other a little bit more. He, he's a great person. And I think it was intentional. Obviously, you can't say anything about this, but you know, the, uh, they included this little fact into the into season four into your line. They said that uh, he's going to be coming out of jail, Juvie, in the summer, and oh. and and season five is going to go into the summer. I mean, like when he comes out of Juvie, you know, you're in the show. He can come back. Don't <laughs> over guy. <laughs> okay. Hey, I, lo I love the theory. I love the theory, but you know, I can't say anything. Yeah, I know. I just can't wait for everybody to see it. I know. The brothers. He was he was such a beloved character that I feel like they will bring him back because um, that's what they did with Kyler. Like, I was like, why isn't Kyler in season two? But then now yeah. people look at him. He's a recurring character. Yeah. So. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't wait for everybody to see what happens. Yeah, so um, did you uh, know before the season that you would be getting your very own musical theme? Did you know that? Because Kenny My has his own theme. Honestly, I had no idea. No idea. I was shocked, but it was really exciting to get to know and get to explore the Kenny character a little bit more. Yeah, they have like a couple instances. Like I interviewed uh, Zach and Leo, the composers of the show, and mm -hmm. they they there's like a little like melody that they use like every time. Um, they use it like you know when Kenny's like seen in the dumpster. Yeah. When uh when he's uh w when he's like during that whole montage at the end of episode two when he's talking um to Sean like they have yeah. that theme that. That, that's pretty cool because not every character has their own theme in the show. It, and I, I, I actually did realize it once I watched it. 
I heard the same music every time I showed up doing and I was doing something. I was like, oh, okay. It's the same music, especially, I, I'll give you another instance. It's when uh, either Griffin is talking to Milena or Leah, as everybody knows, or um, I'm talking to Leah. They have this little music and it's so, oh. it's so cute. And, the and basketball, kinda, yeah. Yeah, 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 Any anytime. It's just like a little doom, doom, doom. I was like, <laughs> that's such a funny theme. I was like, wow, it's cool. Yeah, they have, they have like, you know, the Kenny theme, and then they have that theme, which is like the middle scores. Right. Yeah. And that's my favorite theme. I have uh I, I'll I'll use the term Kennied, which is dancing with headphones. And I I yeah. I've Kennied to that song with the headphones. Oh, really? I love that that song, and then especially uh during the basketball scene it's played and yeah, it's like it, it gives you like the 80s vibes. That's right. That's what it was supposed to do. Cobra Kai is all about the 80s. Yes, sir. And uh, the basketball scene, we talked about basketball in our interview. <laughs> like, we did. For like 15 minutes, we talked about basketball. I'm like, do you play? Yeah. And here you are. Like when I saw yeah. that scene, you know, I'm such a fan of basketball. So like when I saw that, it was so cool. So like, did you, did you remember like, you know, were you, were you like, Cut. Were you like smiling on the inside? Oh, I was smiling on the inside because I already knew what happened. I was yeah. like, oh, I can't wait for him to see that little basketball part. And I'm so glad that they implemented that into the Kenny character because that he that's another side that I relate to Kenny with. Like we are both athletic. We're flexible. We love basketball. That's that's our life. Right. That's our life right there. And I'm so, I was so glad and happy whenever they implemented that into the character because I was like, oh, I'll be able to show my moves a little bit, put a little move on LaRusso, make a layup. But I, I'm going to I'm going to have to be honest to the fans about the layup. Uh, I missed it like three <laughs> times prior and I couldn't get it for some weird reason because I'm, I'm a righty and I, I struggle. I have all I always struggle with my left and they said they wanted me to do left. I was like, you sure you want me to do left? <laughs> But it, it made sense because the way the camera was positioned, they needed to be on the left side. And I missed it three times. And I was like, I'm sorry, guys. I'll do it. I'll do it. I got it. And then I made it that one time, and that was the one they used. And we stopped filming that that part. I was actually going to point that out because I I was um, – when I watched it, like, a couple times, I, I noticed you did a left-hand layup. So then I went back <laughs> to see what hand you blocked the shot with, and you blocked it with your right. So I'm like, oh, he's a righty. Right. There you go, like <laughs> showing off a bit with the left. <laughs> hey, yes, yeah. And then this other funny time that uh, I hope will be in the behind the scenes bloopers. I did a move on LaRusso. I went to the left, and because I was in jeans and the worst shoes ever, I slipped and did like a half split in a way. And people were nervous, but I was like, no, I'm perfectly fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's great. I was embarrassed for a little bit, but it was it was just hilarious. And I can't wait for people to see that. Hopefully it's in the bloopers. Oh, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Were there any other um, moves or shots that you did that didn't make the cut? Um, At first for the wide shot, we decided to do uh, like a kind of an elbow shot, which for everybody who doesn't know, pretty much that's just like right by the free throw line in that kind of vicinity. And we took the shot there, but that was only for the wide shot. And then they decided, hey, let's probably go with the layup instead because – they did see me one time slip and fall right when I was about to take the shot. So they said, just go for the layup. I said, okay, I will do that. Sure. Yeah, it could have been a jump shot. Should have stepped back from like half court. I know, right? Just gone, I done the moves. You remember when I did the uh, the Kobe? I should have kept doing the Kobe all the way back to the uh, uh, to the half court line and shot it up. You should have done like an Andrew Garfield, like dunk, like from the oh, Spider Man. Right. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. That was crazy. That that would really like shock everybody. I think everyone would be like, "Oh, uh, is this kid Spider Man? <laughs> um, what's going on? <laughs> Not for real though. Is this kid?" Miles Morales. Doubt we okay. I I was gonna ask. You, I was <laughs> I was gonna ask you that later, but now that we're on the topic of Spider-Man, now that we're on the topic, it it's been everywhere. Like I I don't know who started it, but it someone started the whole Dallas Young as Miles Morales after seeing your performance in season four, yeah. and it's been blowing up. So like, D yeah yeah, just the reactions to that. Um. 
I had absolutely no idea this was happening until a, fr a few friends of mine would contact me and they'd say, hey, Dallas, I just want to let you know that people are fan casting you as Miles Morales. Like, Miles Morales? What? Miles Morales? What in the world? And they said, look, look at it on both like Instagram, TikTok, or even Google. So I went to Google first and I said, okay, Dallas is pretty young as Miles Morales. And I saw about 20 different articles about it. And I was like, when did this happen? And then I looked at TikTok, but no, it, it you know, it would be an incredible honor to play Miles Morales. But uh, that that's definitely a dream of mine. So you would be interested if if oh yes, I would I would take it in a heartbeat in a heartbeat. Are you a big Spider Man fan? Huge Spider Man fan, yes. I uh, especially the latest uh, movies with Tom Holland. He has done an incredible job just embodying that character, and I, I really love the past movie. Really strong performances from all of the actors really great movie if you haven't seen no way home go go watch it for real everybody definitely and i think um the reason why you know people have been like putting you like like casting you as miles morales you know is because a lot of the things you do in season four you know you really shine in yeah. season four and especially yeah. the um i saw people were mentioning the dancing with the headphones yeah. that was what miles did like that's a big thing and it's like right there it's like you see that similarity and also yeah. the karate like you know you know how to fight right right but and the funny thing is nobody really knows this but in the script it actually mentioned so kenny's uh, uh just his happiness and his demeanor miles morales-esque no yes oh the writers God. the writers put miles morales-esque not even knowing all of this, these conversations about me playing Miles Morales, they just said Miles Morales-esque. And I didn't even think about it too much. I was just like, oh yeah, that is like it, for real. And then I saw all of the different edits just showing the comparisons between the two. So it's it's really cool seeing all of the reactions from everybody. And you're 15 years old? I'm 15 years old, yes. First off, you don't, you, you act like, way beyond your age you're very oh, thank you mature actor and person um thank and, you so much and of course and and also i think it would be true to the character you know rather than casting like a 25 year old right as, as a as a teenager you know right yeah I, I would love that you know any opportunity to play miles morales i would take it in a heartbeat like i said I, so hopefully the opportunity comes my way whenever they're thinking about and really just considering what like if they want to actually go forward with this live action miles morales so hopefully it really happens okay everybody listening to this interview dallas as miles spread the <laughs> spread the hashtag we we, <laughs> we want it we need it i love it that's awesome that's awesome so um in season four you worked a lot with um Griffin, Alexander, Brock, Jaden, uh, all those guys who played your bullies. And yeah. I, I just, I love that story arc. So what was it like, you know, working with, working with them? Um, do you guys beat each other up offset or do you guys get along? <laughs> like, <laughs> we definitely don't beat each other offset. Yeah, that's definitely what we don't do. But uh, no, we, we, we honestly had a lot of fun moments together. We, we got to hang out offset multiple times and especially hanging out with Griffin, Griffin and I stayed at the same hotel while we were filming season four. So he would always come over and we would talk creative ideas for our characters just to see what we can do to get everybody excited for this rivalry. And the other thing is we would play Grand Theft Auto V. We'd have fun <laughs> playing that, eating food, just talking and uh, talking about the scenes and talking about just real life situations. But no, our relationship with Griffin and and all the other bullies, it was it was so exciting being able to work with them, and they're such great actors. That's so cool, and it's like with you and Griffin, it's like you're in your Cobra Kai world, he's in his yeah. Miyagi Do Daniel world, but then you guys come yeah. together for the rival rivalry, just like you know Sam and Tori, Miguel, Robbie. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's that's what it was supposed to be. We're the next generation. Yes, yes. I have a theory. Um, I know you can't say anything oh i want to hear it i want to hear it i'll share it with you i'll share it with you all right my, my theory like you know as to where this show is progressing we uh -huh. know they we know they've won a couple more seasons so this i believe was the last year for uh all of the like tori miguel sam for the all valley I, I i think by next year they'll they'll all be 
um, over 18. They won't be of the age to compete anymore. So I think what the show is going to eventually go to is a series where now these students are going to take over the sensei roles and then you, Una, Griffin, like all the younger casts are going to be like now the the main students with like Miguel being a sensei, Sam, Tori, mm. like that's that's my theory. Like for like the finale, like the like towards the end end of the show. That's yeah. Okay. 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 Hey, I like the theory. I like the theory. I respect it, but I can't <laughs> say anything. <laughs> just 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 to share with you. I know in your head you know exactly. Yes. Of know. course. Yeah. Uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll 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 talk uh when when that happens when right when, when you can confirm that that's actually gonna happen because for sure. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> okay. We'll have that conversation. Okay. Um. So you you you've also been posting a lot of pictures with Owen, Nate, Una, Griffin. You guys are like you have like your own crew i i even know like sholo commented on one of your posts i was like like where's my invite? where's the invite yeah like where's my invite yeah <laughs> so what what's like what's your crew like there like with with mm. that younger cast yeah no we all we all have a great dynamic with each other we're we're such good friends in real life and even though we don't have a lot of interactions in season four offset we do hang out at the park. We always have conversations on Zoom, FaceTime, call. And we try to we try to call the first Saturday of every month. That's what we said what we, we need to do after season five. We said just to keep in contact and stay with each other. But uh no, we, we really have a great relationship on set and offset. So we, we have a we're it's really fun working with all of them. That's great. And I, I just assumed uh since you and uh Una were joining the show, I assumed that you would have a scene together, but you didn't. So no Hope, hoping for season five or in the future that yeah be yeah hopefully something they explore so for sure. um, i'm curious what was your first reaction to the dr scribble bottoms costume <laughs> <laughs> oh the dr scribble bottoms costume something i will never forget like ever um first of all being in that costume I, I felt i felt so goofy i felt so yeah. goofy in that costume but i thought it was it was supposed to be embarrassing and hilarious but the funny thing was whenever i got on set in that part everybody was taking pictures of me and i was like i was like oh y'all gonna post it and i'm gonna look so ridiculous but no i was like it, it's hilarious it's fun and that's what this character is supposed to be like it's, and that's why they incorporated the dr script bombs because he's he's nerdy and he's he's just a regular kid who loves to have fun and draw anime like you said and listen to music but no just being in that costume was it was hilarious and then having to do that whole running scene in a whole squirrel costume <laughs> was so weird but it was it was funny and it, it came out really great on camera do you have the costume i don't <laughs> oh. i wish i did yeah i wish i did but we need to get a petition to get the dr scribble bottoms costume as a halloween costume it has yes. to happen I'm sure people can like put together like a bunch of like get a bunch of stuff and put it together. Yeah, hey, hopefully. I would love for that to happen. Get I would love for other kids just to want to wear the Dr. Scribble <laughs> bottoms costume. And and adults, why not? <laughs> you just gave me an idea for my next Halloween costume. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm <laughs> hyped. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Dr. Scribble bottoms. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I was wondering why you weren't wearing it. In this interview, I would I would think you would have been wearing it. I know I should have I should have asked the creators give me <laughs> Doctor Scribble Bottoms outfit so I could have it for this interview. I should have I should have. Next interview, next interview, <laughs> next for sure. Next interview, I'll, I'll make it happen. I'll make it happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So in episode two, we see the the famous TikTok of <laughs> the milk <laughs> coming out of the locker, uh -huh. which which. I don't mean to laugh. Like I'm, I'm very sorry about that. I hope you're okay. I hope. Oh, no, I'm, good. I'm, good. I'm definitely good. And Kenny's all right too. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, uh, I know. But um, how did they, how did they do that? How did they get all the milk in there? It, it, it was. I'm gonna be honest. It was one of the weirdest contraptions that I've ever seen <laughs> ever. So what they did 
they had the guy controlling the milk, uh, just the whole milk situation and milk scandal to be behind the lockers. And they put this hole in there so he could put the, the contraption in there and then have it all spill out whenever I open it. And the funny thing was, we only had one shot. We only had one shot. So if I oh my reacted too early, if I did it too late, everything would be messed up. And I was like, I was, I, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself, but yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, if I mess this up. And the funny thing was, everybody was around there just watching this whole thing unfold. And it was hilarious whenever it came out because it looked so great. And what happened was they didn't even use the camera. It was actually somebody, it was the uh, camera operator controlling like TikTok. And he was actually recording it like that. Oh, wow. That's yeah, what they ended yeah. so up just, using? That's what they ended up using. So that was a lot more realistic too. Wait, so why was the only one take? Is it because like all the milk would get everywhere? Just because all the milk. And the other thing was, that was my last scene on set. I had five minutes until I had to leave set, sign out, and be out of there. So they were like, we don't have much time. So got it done, and I bolted out of there. Is it because of the – um because you don't have the hours, like, being, like, under 18? Yeah. I, I only have nine and a half hours, and I have to get three hours of school in between there. Wait. Nine and a half hours of filming? Yeah. That's it. That's it? That's a lot. Oh, I mean <laughs> – <laughs> so Well, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. With kids, you, you get used to it. You get used to it. So I've been acting for about six years. At first, I didn't like it at all, but – People don't really understand this about the older cast. They can work for about 16 hours. So, yeah, like 15, 16 hours. So I'm blessed to be a kid yeah. and not 18. I only have three more years, but still, I'm, I'm very grateful for nine and a half hours. But the good thing is we have lunch. We have a lot of conversations with the cast members. So it's a really fun experience during that nine and a half hours. Is it like every time you film, it's it's about that or – Every time I film, unless I have one scene and it's a quick scene, then they'll get me in. They'll have me do three hours of school. I get the scene done and I'm out of there. And I'm and it could be maybe a four hour day. Wow. So they yeah. they so they filmed like about like it's, the filming took about three months. So how many like days do you think you specifically had to film? Um. Well, that's a good that's a good question. Um. I'm going to say most of it, maybe like two thirds of it, probably, because a lot of it, like episode five and six and eight, I wasn't in at all. So during that time, I either came back to Los Angeles or I just I was doing a lot of school just to catch up and uh, get my three hours of school done like that and, or practice training. So I'm going to say maybe like two thirds of it where it was me filming. OK, it's that's still a lot. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's still alive, and uh, I, I just had a really great experience with all of those cast members and crew, it was awesome. Yeah, so in in, in season four, episode seven, this is something mm -hmm. like I, I actually didn't notice like until recently, um, when you freeze frame on Kenny, like I believe this is like in the middle of the episode, this is right before uh, Anthony and his bullies chase Kenny into the library. Mm -hmm. Kenny is signing a sheet that says basketball tryouts. I didn't notice that, but you know, now that I'm thinking about it, you know, it makes sense. And I'm starting to wonder, you know, if he's signing up for the basketball team, like that's going to take some time, like, you know, season five. Like, <laughs> so, okay. Hey, who knows? <laughs> so, so whether or not it happens, like what would, what, um, what do you think about that theory of Kenny being on the basketball team and like having been in Cobra Kai, like using that mentality yeah. for Cobra Kai. I love that theory. I love that theory because of course, of course he would try to incorporate that mentality into the basketball tryouts and the basketball team and the basketball league. He would just try to destroy everybody <laughs> with that, with that Cobra Kai mentality. But uh, no, I love that theory. But the funny thing is I had no idea that people freeze framed on that. And when I first saw it, I was like, Hmm, the basketball tryouts, huh? Okay, that's how, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. It's it's opening up for more opportunities in the future. So I was like, who knows what could happen? Is that that's what you thought when you first saw that? Like, oh, like yeah, oh, they're like this could be something for the future. That's exactly what I thought, and I I, I had no idea that people actually freeze frame just to see what I was signing, and that's yep, that's what I was signing. 
Dallas, everyone's going to freeze frame when it comes to Cobra Kai. <laughs> you got to be ready for <laughs> I anything. Realize that. I realize that. Yes, for sure. <laughs> everyone's freeze framing and zooming mm-hmm. and all. This. It's it's a little creepy when you think about it. But <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's cool, though. We love the Cobra Kai fandom. It's, it's incredible. And it's very strong. Yeah. And there's another uh, thing from, from that same episode, from that same scene. Uh, Leah mentions to Anthony about a fair that's on Saturday. You know, that, mm-hmm. that like, you know, she's inviting him to the fair. Kenny's going to be there too. So it's setting up something there. And then Leah's like, oh, got to go. And that like story arc with Leah was never resolved. So I'm curious, mm-hmm. like, was that... Was the whole thing with the fair? Was that was there ever a discussion of that actually happening? Like us seeing that? In the um, show? No, no. They they just wanted it for that moment. Uh, I didn't exactly know why they had it there, but I think that was just to talk about uh how she was like, hey, you and Kenny would get along great, even though y'all want to beat each other up, and she has no idea. Yeah. So I, I thought that was really cool how they played into that. Uh, but. Yeah, yeah, that they had no I they didn't think that they were going to have a fair scene for season 4 at least. So she didn't know that Anthony was bullying him? No idea. She had no idea. But does she have TikTok? That's the question because uh Anthony's friend That's... posted it. it. Oh, well, well, but the thing is, you don't know if Anthony is a part of that. It could just yeah. be his friend. I mean, even even whenever he he took all of my clothes in that whole locker room scene, she wasn't there to witness it. So she can't say that he is the one that's bullying. Yeah, true, true. Um, that'll be that'll be an interesting setup for season five, hopefully. See what mm-hmm. happens there. Um, what was it like working with uh Milena, who played Leah? Oh, it was a lot of fun working with her. We had a lot of good moments on set, and it was really cool just getting to know who she was because we were like, this could be a p- potential, you know, relationship here. I was like, oh, this, this, it could just be really cool. And uh, the other thing was, I saw this comment about her name, and I was like, okay, so Leah, yeah. L I A, it's kind of like Ali, A L I. I saw that, and I was like, Hey, so that means she, she's gonna have a relationship with either Griffin or not. I was like, okay, that's cool. But uh, but going back to the question though, it was it was it was really cool getting to work with her, and she's such an she's an amazing actress and a great person. Who do you think she should end up with? <sighs> Unbiased opinion. <laughs> Unbiased opinion. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna be honest with you. I have no idea. Who who do you think? I think we need to see more um between Kenny and her because Anthony, like that library scene where you know they 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 were friends before, they kind of had right. stuff in common. Um mm-hmm. we didn't get to see too much with Kenny. So I feel like there's Kenny. still more to explore before right before making that decision. I mean, I don't know, Kenny. I don't know if I don't know if Leah would approve of Kenny's actions or Anthony's actions. Oh, Anthony's actions. <laughs> she, she might just pick Zach. <laughs> and we we won't even she might just pick Zach. Who knows? <laughs> but uh but no, no, no. It's uh but no, I I, I understand what you're talking girl. about. I, I Mr. Steel your girl. But no, I understand where you're coming from though. <laughs> exactly. She goes with Zach. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? La Pusso. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no for real um okay so uh i have another question from that episode from episode seven mm-hmm. um yeah one of the big scenes uh was uh robbie and kenny facing off you know in that mm-hmm. lesson about weakness terry silver yeah. talking about weakness and exploiting the other person's weakness mm-hmm. now um terry silver calls kenny over and, you know, tells him, like, you know, Kenny's like, I, I don't know if I can beat him. Like, Robbie doesn't have a weakness. And then right. Ter- Terry's like, every like everyone has a weakness. And then you mm-hmm. cut to Robbie talking to Crease. And then in the background, you see that Kenny's still talking to Silver. So my, yeah. question, my question to you uh, is, do you think that Silver was the one who told Kenny what to do? Like, like take advantage of him? Or was that Kenny's idea? Like, was it something off screen or was it all Kenny? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I actually think that it was Terry Silver's idea because 
Thomas Ian Griffith was actually telling me what to do. Uh. Acting, acting like he was Terry Silver. He was like, okay, so here's what you're going to do, young man. You're going to hit him with a sweep kick after he kicks you with the move. I don't know what he's going to do yet, but just be able to react to that. Make him feel weak and, and vulnerable and then get him with that sweep kick. And I was like, yes, it's a. And then we went into the scene and that's how it all happened. So pretty much I believe it was Terry Silver's idea. And then Kenny just had to execute. Wait, was that going to be in the episode or were you just like saying it? Nope, it, we we already knew it wasn't going to be in the episode. We were just ad libbing, and That's because so because cool. we had we had to act like we were saying stuff to each other whenever it was uh, Tanner's coverage, because he saw Terry Silver in the background, he saw my, my the back of my head, so we had to act like we were saying stuff. So we just decided to uh, improv a little bit. Imagine improv improving with Thomas Ian Griffith. That's so cool. <laughs> I know, right? He he's in a, oh, he's so cool. He's so cool. <laughs> so um. Is it any different, like, as an actor, knowing that, like, what I'm saying right now is completely irrelevant? Or do you have to, like, convince yourself, like, no, this is, like, the same as any other scene. I got to get myself in this mindset. You got to convince yourself that, you know, this this is any like any scene. Even though it's completely irrelevant, if you want to stay in that moment to get ready to kick him, you can't completely get out of the moment and start talking like you're Dallas Young. Because then it would make no sense. And you wouldn't have that sense of uh, authentic on um, authenticity with your character performance. So that's why we started talking about like, oh, what am I going to do? And having those moments where I was starting to grimace a little bit because of my arm, stay just staying in that with that attitude and staying in that feeling. Speaking of staying in character, I've always been like intrigued by like you know actors who have to. Um, like do like a like a full beat up like you know because it's one thing to do a fight scene where you're both like you know fighting each other it's a choreographed uh -huh. thing but as as Dallas you know as an actor like you know when you when you have to just like brutally even though you're not actually hurting him you know when you're yeah. going after Anthony is he's not defending himself and you have to like put all this emotion in like I hate this guy I want to mm -hmm. beat the heck out of him like is it is it a little tough at first like getting into that mindset um it it is a little tough at first because you know in your heart that this is your friend and you would never actually beat him up but you have to get in that mindset and have that mentality that this is your bully this is the kid who's been messing with you since the from the beginning and griffin and i actually had a conversation about this uh i think it was about three days prior right before the filming and he came to my room and we were just talking about character moments and what we can do to make it even more fascinating and interesting. And that's how I got into that character because Griffin wasn't my friend at the time, like right, right there. He, he was my enemy. He was genuinely my enemy. I had to put that in my brain. And then next thing you know, I, I just was beating him up right there. <laughs> and he was taking, he was taking the shots like a champ. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to hit him that hard with all of my might, but he, he, he did very well taking the shots. But the funny thing is, that people didn't really know. Uh, the the writers didn't put the fact that like, I grabbed him by the mouth right there, by his jaw. So we actually came up with that while he was in my hotel room. We said, what will make it there? Instead of just being down, leaning down to you, what, what can we do? And then we just started collaborating. We were like, okay, I'm going to put my hand right through to your jaw and just say it to you right there. And it came out on set. I'm so, I'm so glad that they used that, that take. That's so cool. Any, any, like, you know, because he is your friend, any mm -hmm. like moments where you guys just the laughing, the smiles happen. <laughs> oh, let me think. Um, <laughs> I think it, it's actually when I grabbed his jaw because, <laughs> it was the, because having, because we're right next, like we're really close to each other's yeah. face. And I'm just grabbing his jaw. But the funny thing was he told me afterwards and we started cracking up about this. <laughs> I was so in character and I was so in the moment that I was grabbing his jaw really hard. <laughs> and he told me afterwards, he was like, dog, I'm not going to lie to you. My jaw hurts so bad. I was like, no, I didn't. Did I actually, Griffin? I'm so sorry. But he was like, he was like, no, no, you're in character. It's all right. It's okay. But no, we, we, we had a lot of moments just laughing about uh, our performances or any jokes or bloopers that we had on set. So we had a tremendous time filming with each other. Yeah, I've done a couple like films where I've had to like, you know, look at someone directly in the eye and 
That's why I'm. Mm. That's why I'm not acting. <laughs> that, I think as some okay. Here's the thing about some actors, and it, it's always the funny ones. Whenever it's your coverage, right? So the camera's on you, and they're not even seen. Whenever they're speaking their lines and saying their lines and having that uh, intimate moment with the other character, sometimes people like to do funny faces or be like. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, oh, don't do that, don't do that, don't make me laugh right now. But no, it's 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 really cool that we all have funny moments like that. Can I guess who would do that? Take a guess. I have a couple guesses. I have two guesses actually. Okay. Do you want me to tell you if it's right or or don't say anything? Um, you could you I'll I'll tell me you could tell me if uh both are right or if one is right or if none. Okay. Because right. yeah, right. there are. T- Two people who sometimes do this. Okay, Shoal and Jacob. <laughs> so you got one right. <laughs> Jacob. Take- yes. Okay, and the other but, one. Yeah, yeah, give me the other one. Let me see who the other one is. Okay. I'm trying to think. So it must be someone like from Cobra Kai. I'm going to um, – um, or it could be one of the middle school students. Okay, I'm going to say – I'm going to say maybe Tanner – is it really Tanner? <laughs> it's it's actually it's more so it's more so Tanner than Jacob. Jacob doesn't do, do it too often, but and, and not neither of them do it too often. But sometimes it's so funny. Tanner <laughs> is the best. He is hilarious. He'll he'll like start dancing and grooving and moving like this, and he'll make funny faces at you. And I'm like I'm like Tanner, Tanner, what are you doing? Stop it, Tanner. And then and then uh, but but he does it every now and again. It's only whenever it's a funny scene, nothing too intimate or dark. But uh, no, it's it's hilarious when they do it. Yeah, I was like I was like thinking because like you know you know Robbie's so serious in the show and Tanner's such uh. a serious like a good actor. But I'm like yes. I'm like thinking like you know you guys have such a close bond like in the show and in real mm-hmm. life. I'm like. He'll probably want to like pick on you and just like throw you off your game just to like <laughs> uh, yeah 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 it, it was funny it was funny um so the scene that i had with jacob uh it was whenever we were in the bathroom he would mess with me whenever <laughs> it was mine and he like hit my stomach he'd be like he hit my stomach like, jacob jacob I'm like, come on man but no it was it was just it was all fun and jokes and we we had such a great time on set especially whenever it was like the happier scenes and the funnier ones. We it, it was really cool being able to interact with all of the uh, more experienced cast members, especially. It's so cool because I feel like your character is the representation of like any fan joining the mm. show. Because here you are, like you start by yourself. You have no connection mm-hmm. to anyone. Then you get a connection to Anthony Russo, and right. then Robbie and Cobra Kai, and then like even like visiting west valley high it's like you're a fan like oh like wow like cool and then yes and then you're meeting like then boom jacob owen mm-hmm. nate like like those new interactions and then the yeah. stand in that's like what do you think of that like kind of having oh that. my oh just having that having those connections with all of those cast members it was so cool it was it was so cool so first of all being in that environment, the the West Valley High scene, being there, I was like, oh my goodness, this is where the school fight took place. This is where everything went down. And I was like, hey, whenever I'm in high school, I'll be here. <laughs> so this is, it, it was really exciting. And then that whole standoff. So Kenny actually had a moment right when the standoff happened or whenever it concluded. And I was like, what the heck just happened, right? And I don't know if they showed it, but I did it and they had a shot of that. And I, I was actually, it was a genuine reaction because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm this is the first time I'm in a standoff with every single cast member that I have looked up to. And even if I haven't watched them on this project, I watched them on other projects before. So I was like, oh my goodness, I'm about to geek out right now. But <laughs> I had to I had to contain my composure and and remain uh respectful and professional throughout the entire time. But I was I was going crazy inside. And and it was freezing outside oh. i just want to say it i just want to say that to everybody freezing. and the sprinklers that probably didn't help <laughs> okay well okay so here's the thing about the sprinkler scene this is the funny thing this is nothing that nobody knows we actually filmed the sprinkler scene two months after we filmed the standoff scene oh wow why because of just 
uh, I think it was location issues. We just had to push it back. So we had completely two different times. The drive-in, it was freezing, and it was actually very warm and hot then. It was, like, humid then. So I was like, okay, the sprinkler is not gonna, it's not gonna be too bad. But that that whole sprinkler scene, it came out great on camera, and it was it was really fun to film. Yeah, and I, I love I love what you were saying about like you know you're you're in this drive drive and standoff where you're supposed to be mad at everyone, but it's like, mm. oh my god, that's Kirby buckets. Oh my god, right. Emma from Jesse. <laughs> right, it, that's exactly what I was thinking. That is what I was thinking. <laughs> Mary Mouser from Frenemies. <laughs> right, 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 all, all of it. But and I'm so glad I didn't have any lives. I just love to be a part of that. I just, I just wanted to be a part of it. The, that, that whole scene was so cool. And I, it's so funny how uh, Nate and Bert are the ones picking on you. Like saying like, oh, you know, oh look at this kindergarten. Uh-huh. Even though like <laughs> they, they're like the, the, young, the young ones of the show. That's like the whole joke. Right. That that is the joke. That's what they wanted to do. That's what, exactly what the creators wanted to do. Yeah. Um. A question that actually just came up to me. Um. Just now, I just thought of it. Uh. Why wasn't Kenny at Hawk's uh ceremony of the haircutting? <laughs> so, so, I was actually there. Were you there? No, not when it came out. <laughs> <laughs> I got you right there, I got you right there. So, so I, w- I was there at the beginning. So first of all, there was a whole different scene at first. And then we got into the part where we were fighting uh, Hawk, okay? The only problem with that is they actually took me out of the scene because it would just be a little bit awkward for Kenny to see that, to actually witness his idol and his his mentor hurt somebody like that and that wasn't right for a kid to see so they took me out of the scene and i, I wasn't too upset because then I, I had to go home and that was that was that was my day so i was like i was like all right i mean it's gonna look great on camera but no it was it was pretty much just that i was in the scene at first but they had to take me out just because that that wasn't right for a 14 year old kid at the time to see did you do anything in the scene originally I remember I pushed a bucket. So it was, like I said, it was a whole different scene prior to the scene leading up. And I, I pushed the bucket and I made a loud noise. And that startled, I guess, Jacob or something like that. And then he was like, hey, is everything okay? That's why he, that's why he said, hey, is everything okay? And then that's when we came in. Uh-huh. Or that's when the Cobra Kai sit came in. So it, it kind of made sense in the actor's head. But yeah, it, it, it came out really good, though, in the end. Does does Kenny know what happened though? Do you think? I think Kenny has an idea. I think Kenny has an idea because it would be interesting for a character such as Hawk to have a crazy mohawk and to have it all shaved off. Now I don't know if he knows who did that to him, but I I think he has a, a good idea of who what group did that to Hawk. Yeah. So when you said there was a whole scene before, that's what you were referring to, Kenny pushing the bucket, or was there something before yeah. that? No, 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 no. It was it was that scene before, right before leading up to Hawk realizing that he was getting ambushed. Okay. Yep, and, yep, yep. And they and they completely cut that scene out. Got it. And also, I'm curious, what was the very first scene you filmed and the last scene you filmed from season four? Very good question. The for, the first scene that I filmed, and I'll never forget it too. The first scene that I filmed was it in the show, it was episode four. It, yeah, I know we we jumped really far. Wow. Ahead. So, yeah, so it was episode four. It was right after Hawk, Nate, and Owen all teamed up against me. And uh they, you know, made me feel bad about who I was and my place in Cobra Kai. It was when I came to Cobra Kai and I was letting everybody know, hey. This dude who with the spiky red hair, he bullied me. What are you gonna do about it? Right? So that that was that was my first scene wow. on the show. I sweat was dripping down my face. <laughs> I, I, I was so, I was a nervous wreck. I was struggling that day because I was like, I'm in the atmosphere of all of these stars, and this just mm-hmm. feels so awkward. I don't know any of them, but they really welcomed me with open arms, and I have this picture. That uh, I haven't shared just yet, but I, I need to share it. I need to share it for sure. It's 
Oh, no, I did, actually. It was a part of my 10 Instagram posts of uh, Cobra Kai BTS. It was whenever they were helping me tie my belt. That right there meant so much to me. It was, it was Joe and it was Tanner helping me tie my belt because I had no idea how to tie a belt. And they were like, hey, Dallas, we'll help you out. And that just made me feel more relaxed and more comfortable being able to work with them. But that was my first scene. And then to answer your other question, my last scene. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you got you're taking me back. <laughs> my last scene, I think I feel like it was the Sam and Tory fight. If I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was. It was a Sam and Tory fight, which was which ended up being my last scene on the show. So pretty much they got rid of the actors who were up on doing the fights and stuff, and they were just doing coverages. So they were doing like Daniel's coverage, Johnny Lawrence's coverage, uh, the sensei's coverage, all that stuff. And we just had to be there just just in case they saw us. And the next thing you know, they wrapped us all and that, that was it. And we got uh, standing ovations and everything for wrapping the season. So it was, it was really cool. That's amazing. All right. So for the All Valley Tournament, um, in order to keep the the winner's identity a secret because they had all the spectators there, um, is it true that there were, um, like, did they film like both winners, uh, winning the tournament or like, or both competitors winning the tournament just to fool the audience and have them not know who won? They did film it that way. That's exactly what they did. So they had two different scenarios, Miyagi Do winning and Cobra Kai winning. Wow. So it was really funny. I really, I really hope that this comes out as a blooper because whenever they won, you know how Sensei Silver had his whole uh, speech about there are new locations opening? Yeah. So <laughs> Johnny took the mic <laughs> and he, he was just talking about anything and everything. It wasn't even about new dojos opening. He was just like, I'm so proud of everybody. Then Daniel took the mic and he was like, you know, I'm just so proud of everybody. We did. We worked so <laughs> hard for this. They started to get choked up. They're like, oh. Oh my goodness, this is so incredible. Then, <laughs> then, that wasn't even it. Johnny <laughs> decided to get down on one knee and act like he was proposing to <laughs> Carmen and was like, I love you, Carmen. Will you marry me? And it was the funniest oh my thing God. ever. <laughs> And then, then right when he said, right when he said the will you marry part, they were like, they were like, cut. They were like, okay, cut this. They were like, cut it. Wait, was it like they were, at, were they jo like, obviously they were joking, but were they like, like acting it out as if it were real? They were, they were kind of joking the whole way. They were right. kind of joking the whole way. Yeah. And I think everybody knew who won. They all knew, all the fans and all the background artists, they knew that Cobra Kai won. <laughs> But he was just going off. And, yeah, it was so funny when he did that with Carmen. And Carmen up there in the stands was like, oh. she was doing all of it. it. But, no, it was great acting out. And everybody started laughing on stage. Was it like like when he got on one, one knee, was there like a gasp? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a gasp. And then the Cobra Kai, the Cobra Kais, we were all like, no, he's not. We are like, no, he's not. But, then, but no, it was, it was really funny acting it all out. What was what was so? How, how were Silver and Crease reacting to that? Silver and Crease like they were acting as if they lost. Pretty much, they were they were they were still in the moment. They were doing great. The other Cobra guys, us, we weren't doing too well. We were just laughing because the, the, yeah, no, the, the Crease and Silver were like, oh, we lost, you know, uh, depressed and sad. But it was it was really fun. Oh my god, we need to see that. We need they to see have that. to show it. They have to. They filmed all of that. They filmed all of it. Wait, so did they get – did they show Robbie winning or was it just Sam for the alternate version? It was – it was – no, no, no. It wasn't Robbie winning. It okay. was just Sam. So okay. Robbie Robbie lost, okay, and we all knew that. But it was Sam winning and then it was Tori winning. Okay, so 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 was it like all one consecutive thing where Sam wins and then – So at first it was Sam wins and – I was actually kind of shocked because somebody told me that this might happen earlier, but I was like, wait, why did she just win? But then somebody told me, you remember what they talked about earlier? I was like, oh, 
that all makes sense. That all makes sense. But then uh, they took a little break, and then they went into Tori's version of winning once everybody knew that it was pretty much fake. So, yeah, so to answer your question, it was kind of a one consecutive thing like that. That story is so funny. I hope we see that. <laughs> I know. I hope so, too. <laughs> Were there any other scenes of Kenny that got cut from Cobra Kai season four? Um, yes, there was this one scene where I had a moment with uh, my mom, actually. Oh, wow. I had a moment where my, with my mom and I was like starting to get emotional and I was starting to like just really think about uh, the fact that they bullied me. And it was right after the bullies had me at the park and they all tricked me but because of the story it, there was no reason to put it there there was no place to put it so i understood whenever they took it out and it all made sense yeah that that would yeah i got to i got to meet kenny's mom i wish everybody got to meet her who uh who played her uh her name was michelle i know her name is michelle i don't know her last name but great great actress she, she was awesome playing my mom Okay, that's so. And cool. then, hey, hey, who knows? Who knows? In the extra cut, they might actually show it. Yeah, I love how like you know they're they're exploring like Kenny's home life in season four, and I hope they continue to do that in season five. I I hope it wasn't just like a one time like oh here he's in the universe that's it. Like I hope mm -hmm. there's there's more development there with like, but season four you really it was it was you like I would put you on the level of like Terry. Like, you know, Terry, you know, like, I no, I'm so serious. I'm so serious. I'm not just saying this because Terry was introduced to this universe or at least mm. in the Cobra Kai universe. Uh -huh. He had a whole arc. You know, you were like, I feel like your arc was kind of mirroring him in a way. In a way, in a way. I mean, we our characters were both kind of gr growing together and starting up in Cobra Kai at the same time. So, yeah, it does make sense. Wow, that's that's wild though for you to put me in that conversation. That that that's exciting. It's really it's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so I know you already filmed season five, and you can't reveal any details about that. But mm -hmm. when you finished filming season four, like like right mm -hmm. after you finished, you know, Kenny is this angry kid, no mercy. What what right. were you expecting to see from him, or hoping to see from him in season five? Oh, without spoiling anything. Yeah. Like, after I, I think I was four. just, I think I was just, uh, honestly, I'm going to keep this as a general answer. I'm just going to say, I just wanted to keep seeing him grow as a strong character and keep seeing him develop mentally and physically and keep getting better at karate with his skills. But that's all I could give you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And do you think, or do you hope? Do you hope that there's a possible redemption for Kenny? Because would you would you say he needs to be redeemed? Um. Well, you never know what could happen. There are there's always open they're always open with different possibilities and different opportunities with each and every character. So hey, maybe maybe you'll have a redemption at some point. Maybe you never know. That'd be cool. I hope. I hope. I love yeah. Kenny. He the complete transformation. I was like, here's Kenny dancing yeah. <laughs> for the school bus, and then no mercy. Jeez. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, by the way, what were you chanting to um to Tanner? You know, like like when you know he was about to punch Hawk and it cut to you in slow motion. Oh. What were you what were you saying? <laughs> I said, Oh, I gotta. You're taking me back. You're taking me back, Drew. I gotta go back. Give me a second. Get him a, a body bag. <laughs> that is what I said, actually. No. No. That is no. what I said. No, it's not. Is it really? That's what I said. That is what I said. But but that's not the one that they use. Oh that's not the one God. that they use. They didn't use that. They didn't use that because it just wouldn't factor in with the story of me <laughs> knowing that reference. So I, it was that. funny. Because somebody coming somebody said that to me. They said, they said. Say, put him in a body bag, okay? And I, I was like, put him in a body bag, you know? But but they didn't use that. But the one that they used, I, I was just like, I was like, beat him up. Get him. Do this for all of us. Come on, Robbie. That's pretty much what I said. 
but yeah, but it was cool because no nobody had any idea of what I was saying because it just looked like I was mouthing words. Yeah. Oh, that would have been so funny if you said get him a body bag. Yeah, yeah. That would have been so funny. People have been like, how does Kenny understand that reference? No, it would have been it would have taken you out of the show. But, right. Right. Uh, but it's but it would have been funny. It would have been it would have been funny. It would have been good. It would have been yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so before we wrap up, I want to play a quick game with you, okay? Okay. Called This or That. This or That, all right. This or That. So I'm going to name, like, a bunch of things, like, and just really quickly, like, just choose. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, let's do it. So let's do it. Just to get, you, get to know you. It's random stuff about you, and it's um some stuff about Karate Kid or Cobra Kai. So whatever you like better, whatever you prefer, okay. just pick, and we'll go to the next one, okay? Awesome. Let's do it. All right. Here we go. Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Cardio or weights? Cardio. Baseball or basketball? Baseball. Pancakes or waffles? Good question. <laughs> waffles. TV or book? TV. Ocean or mountains? Ocean. Winter or summer? Summer. 1980s or 1990s? 1980s. Water slides or roller coasters? Roller coasters. Star Wars or Harry Potter? Harry Potter. <laughs> sleeping Harry in Potter. sleeping in or early riser? Sleeping in. Sleeping <laughs> in. Easily. This one I think I know, but Spider-Man or Iron Man? Spider-Man all day, every day. <laughs> Dancing or karaoke? Dancing. Cobra Kai or Karate Kid? Cobra Kai. Johnny or Daniel? Johnny! Crease or Silver? Silver. <laughs> Tori or Sam? Tori. Cobra Kai, stand up! <laughs> Punches <laughs> or kicks? Kicks. Dr. Strange or Dr. Scribble Bottoms? <laughs> Dr. Scribble Bottoms all day. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Scribble Bottoms. <laughs> of course. Middle school or high school? High school. School bus or bike to school? I like biking to school. Miyagi Do or Eagle Fang? Eagle Fang. Red Mohawk or Purple Mohawk? Red Mohawk. <laughs> and the final one, Strike First, Strike Hard, or No Mercy? No Mercy. Oh, nice. No Mercy. That was good. That was good. Very quick on your feet. Yes, sir. All day, every day. That's right. You still like Star Wars though, right? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I've, I've never watched a Star Wars movie in my life. And I've watched a single Harry Potter movie. So this is a, run, <laughs> okay. this is, this is a running joke. This is a running joke on set with all of the kids. They've all watched either the Star Wars films or the, the, uh, the Harry Potter franchise. And I've watched neither. So they're like, Oh, Dallas, you're so uncultured. <laughs> what have you watched? Like that's part of that same genre. I did watch um that that's like in that realm. Like uh, I watched Percy Jackson growing up. Honestly, that's okay. that's kind of what I watched. I was more interested in that, and I need to watch Harry Potter because, of course, it's one of the most iconic franchises in the world. So I definitely need to watch that and, and Star Wars and Star Wars and Star Wars and, and Star Wars. Wars. Definitely, definitely. Um. Also, I know. Um. Have, we talked about in our last interview. You said. Uh. You you didn't watch i don't I, th I think you said you didn't watch all of karate kid 3 have you have you gotten around to that i still have not <laughs> i need to i need to i have so what i can recall i can i i know i watched uh karate kid one i know i'm i know i watched all of them whenever i was like five years old like training because I was a martial artist growing up, like whenever I was like five. But no, I need to watch it again. I need to watch two and three because I don't really remember them. Did you know that when uh, Silver was like in the dojo training you and saying like, uh, there are three things that make a champion. 
uh, desire, discipline, devotion. Mm -hmm. Like, did you know that was from Karate Kid 3? Yes, I understood all the references, though, just because I did my research whenever I heard them. And then they also talked about it. The creators and the writers and the producers and the directors, they all talked about it on set. So many references, especially with him. Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. Now, we just need him to say, like, um, we just need him to go over the whole Quicksilver method with you next season. <laughs> That's hey, who knows? Who knows? You never know. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm super excited. I have so many theories. Um, your character, I'm very excited to see what they do. And hopefully we get some teases soon. You know, they finished filming season five so hopefully yeah. we get some stuff soon and yeah i are you are you looking forward to uh the release i'm looking forward to it because this release of season four has ultimately changed my life and i'm i'm so just elated and overly excited for the future and i can't wait for everybody to see season five because it is such a masterpiece from episode one to episode ten so I can't wait for all the releases and the little quick teasers to come out because I'll tell everybody it is worth the wait. And what are you, are you doing anything in the meantime? Um, considering that you're not filming right now, are you working on any other projects while you're training? Uh, honestly, right now I'm just back to doing more auditions, trying to find the next job. But I wanted to let everybody know though, my movie 1-800-HOT-NIGHT actually just uh, got accepted into the Santa Barbara Film Festival. So we wow. will be doing that very soon and uh, talking about the release. So I can't wait for everybody to see that movie because that was such a masterpiece of film. And then I'm just going to be finding the next job and continue to work until Cobra Kai's uh, future. First off, congratulations on that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, thank you. And I, I think uh, this show has definitely opened many doors for you. Look at, look at Sholo. He's Blue yeah. Beetle. He's Blue Beetle. I mean, I mean, <laughs> listen, I, I, I hope there's a little trend there, you know, with the superheroes, <laughs> Miles Morales. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, maybe so, maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but no, that it, it would be a blessing. It would be a blessing. But I'm so happy for Solo. Such a great person to work with. Such a great human in general. And he really deserved it, especially with all of his hard work. Definitely. Definitely. Well, Dallas, I just want to thank you so, so much for coming on um, to talk with me. It's always a pleasure. Um, once again, you killed season four. Um, you were one of the, the biggest highlights from the season. So um, thank you. Thank you. Of course. And it was such an honor getting to talk to you. Can't wait for season five. And also everyone out there, thank you for uh, donating to St. Jude's. Uh, you can yes. still donate um, by clicking the donate button down below. Dallas and I, Really appreciate it. So before we sign off, is there anything you want to say to the fans? Fans, get ready for season five. And also want to let you know, get ready for high school next year. Because you're going to be in a world of pain. <laughs> the smile, the smile. That's what everybody was, they were all talking to me about this smile. So I just wanted to give it to everybody. But get, get ready for season five. It's going to be incredible. Thank you so much for joining the live. And I had such a great time talking to you, Drew. It's always a pleasure. And I can't wait to do it for the season five talk conversation. Yes. Very excited for yeah. that. Thank you, Dallas. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time on Cobra Kai Kid. And until then, remember no mercy.